Good morning. I hope that your day is off to an incredible start. If it is the middle of the day, I hope that your day has gone incredibly well. And if it is the end of your day, great job. You did it. You've made it through another day, and I am proud of you. Um, so I live in Iowa, and man, it is supposed to snow like 12 12 to 14 inches today. Um, it's going to start snowing in like three or four hours and it's going down and I am going to grab a quick workout and grab a few things from the grocery store before it goes down. But here's what I found out living in Iowa. No matter how bad the weather is, no matter how much it snows, um, everything's going to be back to normal pretty quick. Um, I grew up in South Carolina. I've lived in South Carolina and North Carolina most of my life, um, except for the time I lived in California, which was about seven years. Um, man, like, no matter how much it snows, they clean the roads up quick. But in North Carolina and South Carolina, if it snowed 12 inches, everything would be shut down. There would be um, no bread, no milk, uh, no toilet paper, no paper towels, uh, all the little generators will be gone, all the light bulbs, I mean, all the, <laughs> not light bulbs, all the, the batteries will be gone, flashlights will be gone, everybody will be ready for the apocalypse, everybody will be ready. <laughs> um, man, just uh, such a funny contrast, like... When I first moved to Iowa, um, my wife's family was asking me if I had a winter jacket. And I was like, yeah. Turns out, I really just had like a Nike windbreaker. And in negative six, not going to cut it. I nearly died in pumping gas one day. I was like pumping gas. And I was like, you know, I, I got out put my card in, put my little pin in, and then it's like, do you want a, you know, do you have a rewards card? No. Do you want a two liter Coke? No. Do you want a car wash? No. Do you want a receipt? No. Just give me the gas. Come on, bruh. Give me the gas. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was going to die. I was so cold. Um, man but uh in the carolinas it's not like that just not like that not that cold um i was just but i was just thinking about something i was um i'm sure that i've shared this with you before but my grandmother was undergoing chemotherapy and she was exposed to covid19 and um she was dying of cancer you know, she, she, she was, she was hanging in there. She was doing good. My grandmother was tough as nails. Um, thank the good Lord for technology because, um, my mom is not the most tech, like technology savvy. Um, my grandma definitely is not, but, um, my mom ended up figuring out how to, uh, video stream and, uh, FaceTime and stuff like that, and, um, I had the opportunity to talk to my grandmother a lot, and she got to see, so she is, she'd met our oldest son, but not our, our new, uh, our new baby boy, who is now 10 months, but, um, I'm so glad that she got the opportunity to, uh, see them, because, uh, she ended up dying soon after she got COVID, and the tragedy behind that is, um, or the beautiful thing, if, if you, you, when I get to heaven, I can ask my grandfather this, but um, my, my grandfather ended up getting COVID from my grandmother, and my grandmother died on, um, I believe, a Wednesday, and then my grandfather died about five days after that, and just a really tragic time, um, but so thankful for technology, so thankful that I get, I got to have conversations with her, to pray for her, to, um, to, to see 
let her see like our little boys running around just like um it was just really really neat experience but i was thinking about how at my grandma's both like it'd be me and my brother and my cousins and we'd be we'd be acting a fool as my grandmother would say and uh she'd say you acting like you got no sense and she would say a few other things but i'm gonna honor my grandmother and i'm not gonna say some of the things that she said <laughs> but um she was a character um she definitely um i don't know what your stance is on this um we we don't discipline our children this way but my grandmother um definitely made me march outside and pick my own hickory stick and wore my butt out when I des and when I deserved it. I deserved it. When I when I got a, 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 a whooping, as we say in the Carolinas, a whooping. When I got a whooping, I deserved it. Um, but gosh, I love my grandma. And I just think about her buttermilk biscuits, her cooking, fried chicken, collard greens, buttermilk biscuits fat back in the green beans Woo! so good uh baked macaroni and cheese so good so good but um she uh she she's incredible and i was just thinking about how we would always be like i lived outside when I was a kid like we were always playing outside like playing in trees just running around playing outside um, playing basketball doing whatever I was like always outside it didn't matter how cold it was it didn't matter if it was raining um, always outside like always 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 outside and um, of course we'd be dirty and I was thinking about how we'd have to get cleaned up before we went to the table before we got to get all that good food we had to act like we got some sense clean ourselves up and then we would be ready to sit at the table and what's ironic about that is a lot of people believe that is what it is like with God a lot of people believe that they need to clean up their life. They need to get their act together before they can go to church or before they can pray. Um, I got, you know, that they, you, you have this ideology that you need to um, not sin for a few days in a row before you can pray. And this is just not this is just not true it's a lot of people think it is behave and then believe and then you can belong it's actually you belong to god right now god made you god created everything that exists he is the the ultimate he's the ultimate designer of everything and you belong to him. Um, it is up to you to acknowledge that, but you already belong. So you don't have to do anything to belong to God. God created you. You already belong. And then the next part, it's, it's not behave, not get your act right, and then believe behavior modification is not God's main priority it is your heart it is heart transformation is the thing that God wants so you already belong to God and when you put your belief in Jesus Christ the proxy of that the the proxy of you trusting in Jesus Christ will be a changed life. And so many people, so many Christians, it breaks my heart because so many people are hurting in this world and they need Jesus so badly. 
and we are portraying this Jesus that is unattainable. Like we could never reach Jesus. Jesus came to us. We can never earn our standing with God. So God came down to us. There's this mountain that we try to climb to earn our right standing with God, to, to do enough good things, to make the right choices, to try harder. And God wants you to trust more because we could never earn it. We can never make our way up that mountain. So God came down to us in the person of Jesus Christ and he is offering you the gift that you could only accept or deny it's not behave believe belong you belong to God when you put your belief in Jesus Christ your eternity your life will be radically transformed God loves you too much to leave you just like you are and that doesn't mean that you're bad he wants to make you better. And we, we get this idea of, I need to stop doing this stuff so that God will love me. And it's not true. God already loved you. God loved you right where you are. He wants to know you. He knows your name. He, but he wants to know you. He wants to be in a relationship with you. He wants you to trust him. So uh, remember, it was just something I was remembering my grandmother and just how much I love her and how much I miss her um, like it's gonna snow a lot today and we would like some people think this is gross but like we would make snow cream um, like pretty much we would just take snow and mix sugar and vanilla extract together and eat it um, in retrospect kind of nasty but uh, it tasted good and uh, it puts a smile on my face because it reminds me of my grandma but um, she would always make us act right, get cleaned up, and then we could sit at the table. And God has already told you, uh, you already have a seat at your table, at the table. He said that he had already prepared a room for you. He had gone before you and gave you gifts and talents to live out this calling and this purpose that he has your life. He created you authentically and specifically because he loves you that much so it's not behave and then believe it's you understand that you belong to God and you can choose to accept that and then when you put your faith in Jesus's finished work at the cross his life and his death and his resurrection when you put your faith in him the proxy of that will be life change but you don't have to do anything to earn it. It is your gift from God to accept. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day.